Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've got a couple of problems with this patient here. First and foremost, you can see that there's a grommet in the ear uh, and a grommet is essentially a, a cylindrical piece of plastic with a hole in the middle, to put it bluntly. And uh, it will be put in there by a surgeon. So it, the surgeon will actually make a cut in the eardrum and then shove the grommet in. And that is to allow for middle ear ventilation. Um, so it will be implanted in cases where there is chronic eustachian tube dysfunction. So in other words, there's congestion behind the eardrum, there's negative pressure, there may be a buildup of fluid like mucus behind the eardrum, uh, which the surgeon will undoubtedly suction away and then shove the grommet in. And uh, it's essentially a bypass. So the middle ear isn't getting ventilation properly from the eustachian tube opening and closing. So the, there's a mechanical intervention there. There's a mechanical opening to the middle ear, which is the grommet. Now it's been extruded uh, because this is, a, this is actually a char grommet. So grommets come in different shapes and sizes and this is a char one and you can tell by the, the, you'll see in a moment that the back end of the grommet has kind of a baffle on it. So they tend to fall out at about eight, nine, ten months, roughly something like that. So this one has been naturally extruded and uh, it's now adhered to the left side of the drum. So you can see I'm just kind of peeling it away here with the suction. And unfortunately, it does cause a little bit of bleeding, um, but it couldn't be helped. And uh, you can actually see where it was adhered. You can see some dead skin, white, so there's that white debris on the, uh, on the eardrum there. And uh, I'm sure some of you are wondering at this point, why don't I just go down and, and fish it out with some crocodile forceps or a hook? Um, but that would be in incredibly dangerous to go that deep with, with a, a large pair of forceps or a, a hook. Um, so, and the, the suction is doing a fair job. We just have to be very gentle with it because it's adhered. So uh, what we're going to do is, uh, now that it's kind of mostly unstuck, we're just going to apply some olive oil, and the olive oil will allow me to actually latch onto the grommet, and it will also allow the grommet to kind of slide away um, down the ear canal with that much friction. Um, so there we are, fairly generous amount of, uh, of olive oil drops there. And now you can see I'm just aiming for that um, sort of dead skin which is crusted around the grommet, dragging it forwards, and it's pretty much unadhered at this point, so I can very, very easily remove it now. It does get stuck again, unfortunately. Again, that's just due to the to the, the baffle on the other side of the shower grommet. Um, so you can just about see it on the right-hand side, and that's basically to stop it from being extruded very, very quickly from the eardrum. So we'll go back in here and I'll, uh, I'll fish it out with a cawthorn hook, which is this metal instrument you're seeing here. And uh, unfortunately, I do end up dropping it, and then um, so a little bit of faffing will ensue here. But uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a good close-up of the grommet and um, you, know, you can see what it looks like. So um, just going back to, the, to the, the reason why somebody would have a grommet, your eustachian tube is what connects your middle ear to the back of your nasal cavity, your nasopharynx. Now, if you're interested in the anatomy and learning a bit more, I'll link you to an anatomy video that I did quite recently where I draw out all the structures. But essentially, because it has a hole in the middle, you know, you're, you're allowing ventilation through to that middle ear, which is lined with a mucosa lining, okay? And there are mucosa linings all over your body, you know, throat, your digestive tract, um, you know, nasal cavity and so on. And um, when, <clears throat> when, you, when that eustachian tube, which connects your middle ear to your nasopharynx, doesn't open and close, bearing in mind that it should open and close several times a day when you swallow, yawn, chew and so on, um, if that's clamped closed, what will happen is that the air that's trapped inside your, your middle ear will start to run out essentially, so the oxygen and nitrogen may diffuse into those mucosal cells, and then a negative pressure will build up. Um, so you need to release that pressure somehow, and that's the function of the grommet. So there's the eardrum there. You can see a little bit of bleeding on the left-hand side. So it's not obviously pouring out, but it is bleeding underneath the skin, so you, know, you could call that hemorrhaging or ecchymosis or hematoma, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's not, it's not terrible. Um, and then that section there, can you see this kind of circle here? Um, and this is where the grommet would have been inserted. Um, so obviously it's healed back up, um, possibly slightly thinner than the rest of the eardrum. And this sort of patchy kind of white cloudy debris on the left hand side, that's scar tissue. So uh, the other thing to note about this eardrum, which is a bit more subtle, is that it is slightly retracted. So you can see near the handle of the malleus, kind of here, you can see how the eardrum's kind of wrapped around the handle of the malleus a bit tightly. That's a very subtle sign of, of that the retraction is back. So in other words, now that the grommet has fallen out, there is now 
a, a negative pressure starting to build behind the eardrum again. So clearly the eustachian tube dysfunction is still there. Um, and I mean, technically a grommet isn't a cure for that. It's merely just alleviating the symptom for a while of the eustachian tube dysfunction. Um, so again, the, the eardrum is tightly wrapped around the, um, the handle of the malleus and the lateral process of the malleus. So it is very gently being sucked backwards, a bit like when, you, um, you know, when you're uh, up in an aeroplane and then you start to descend, you, you get that kind of weird feeling in your ear. That's because the eardrum's being, again, retracted. Um, so because, just due to a difference in air pressure, essentially. So now this is, um, you know, although the eardrum doesn't look pretty in the traditional sense, it doesn't look too bad, but again, a follow-up with ENT is required. Now have a look at this ear. And this is extremely concerning. Do you see this kind of pocket, this kind of crater that's just north of the eardrum? This is quite a deep and large retraction pocket. Now this, interestingly, this ear has never had a grommet. This is the ungrommeted ear. But the patient has eustachian tube dysfunction on both sides. So because this ear hasn't been treated with a grommet, that negative pressure has built up and has been there for so long that that area just north of the eardrum has been sucked backwards, but it's been sucked backwards to, backwards to such an extent that it's created this kind of crater. This is a normal looking eardrum. Just for perspective, just so you can see the difference, you can see nice ring, pale gray, and above the eardrum, it looks a little gray, a little pink. It's a smooth surface. That's fine, that's totally normal. There's the retraction pocket. And unfortunately, if this isn't if this doesn't go away, if this doesn't resolve, this will almost certainly turn into a cholesteatoma. And a cholesteatoma is, a, is a, basically a growing sac or ball of dead skin. So skin will migrate out from the center of the eardrum, which is normal, it, grow, you know, it grows outward from the eardrum uh, in all directions, and it will inevitably migrate into that pocket and then get trapped. And then more skin will go in, more skin will go in, more skin will go in. And because it can't get out of that pocket, you know, it, will, it will just form into this huge ball and um, as the cholesteatoma gets larger um, it will start to press on certain things you know it can erode the ossicles um, you know the roof of the the middle ear called the tegment tympani is you know it's a fairly thin piece of bone separating the middle ear from the brain so it is a, a very worrying condition it will have to be removed surgically um, so i couldn't i can't see any cholesteatoma there at the moment despite me having tilted the endoscope to have a look um, but again, this is a job for, for ENT there. We'll have to do something about that. Um, and I have referred this patient back to the surgeon who originally put the grommet in in the first place. So hopefully this patient can, um, can get it sorted. There's the grommet, as you can see, you know, from end to end, it's, you know, probably three millimeters, something like that. So incredibly small. Um, and they're meant to fall out. You know, they're, they're meant to be extruded after a certain amount of time. Um, so you can get grommets which stay in for, for much longer. Um, and they're, they're just of a different design. Um, you can also get T-tubes as well. Um, so there we go. This is more common in, in children, I have to say. The patient that you've seen today is an, is an adult, uh, you know, an, uh, an elderly male gentleman. Um, but, uh, you know, even adults get chronic eustachian tube for, uh, dysfunction from time to time. So there we go. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching, liking and subscribing and I will see you on the next one.